Hi, I'm Randy Christian with the Essential Faith Project, and this is an introduction to discipleship ministry in the local church. If you're in leadership in the local church, then you know there has been a resurgence of interest and awareness of the nature of discipleship and the command that our King gave us to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that He commanded. Now, nobody disagrees with this, but the problem is, how do we do it? So we have almost a universal agreement that the mission of the church is to make disciples. Everything else, evangelism, uh, impacting the, the world around us, all of this is part of discipleship. But how do we do that? What we have found at the Essential Faith Project is it starts with making sure we have a basic understanding of terminology. What does the word disciple mean? In, a, in English, this is a very spiritual, very specialized term. But 500 years ago, it was simply a word in English for what we would call a student. The Greek word that is translated disciple is mathite, and it means exactly the same thing, a student of any kind. Discipleship is the process of making an effective student out of somebody who does not know Jesus. So, Jesus himself said in Luke 640, a student who has been fully trained will become like his teacher. That's what discipleship is. Passing on what Jesus taught us, all that he commanded, so that others can have a life of following him. In fact, in the modern church, we've made the mistake of separating disciple from the term Christian, as though a disciple is more of a specialized kind of Christian. But biblically, there's no difference whatsoever. In fact, in Acts 11, we're told that disciples, which is what followers of Jesus were called, were now beginning to be called Christians. So it's the exact same phrase. So understanding that a disciple of Jesus is simply a student of Jesus who is in the process of becoming like Jesus. The question then comes, of course, how do we in the local church bring this about? That's, that's the mission he gave us. I believe there's two things that are involved. First of all, we have to understand the nature of faith. Faith is three-dimensional. It is belief, and Jesus himself gave us this broad mandate to teach all that he commanded so that we can believe in that. Second, it's reliance or trust on what we believe. This is why Paul is able to say our salvation is a matter of grace through faith, not something we've done, but a gift from God. And finally, faithfulness or loyalty. This is a lifestyle that naturally results practicing righteousness because we believe and because we rely on Jesus. Without faith, the full picture, not just one of those segments, we cannot please God. And what many of us don't realize is that in the Bible, the Greek word in the New Testament translated faith, trust, and faithfulness is exactly the same word, pistis. That's the first component. The second component is we have to have people who are spiritually healthy. Jesus has told us how to do that. He has given us in his own teaching and through the apostles a very clear picture of what spiritual health looks like. But we need to focus not on programs, but on shepherding our people to become spiritually healthy. To consistently make strong and healthy disciples, the church leadership needs first to be spiritually healthy itself. This is something that is absolutely essential and cannot be overemphasized. Second, the church leadership has to have a clear and shared definition of discipleship, of what it is to be a disciple and to grow. Third, having that shared definition of discipleship, now the church leadership has to grow together to have a shared picture of how discipleship will be done in their congregation. This has to be very simple, 
It has to be clear. It has to be realistic. But most of all, it has to be something that the leadership of the church can all agree on and say, that's how we do it. Next, there needs to be a means of assessing the effectiveness of the approach to discipleship or any programs that might be used. For example, first of all, is the approach itself effective in accomplishing our goals? And in order to understand that, second, we need a means to understand, are our people actually spiritually healthy? It is important to note that the larger a church becomes, the harder it is to do this on a personal basis. So we have to be very vigilant not to give in to the temptation to process people with programs instead of shepherding people. When we shepherd people, we talk to them individually about where they are with the essentials of spiritual health. And as we do that, then we now know, are we effective in the task that our King has given us? The Essential Faith Project exists to assist churches and individual Christians in making, assessing, and strengthening disciples. So if we can be of any use to you, if you have any questions that we can help with, please feel free to contact us, www.essentialfaithproject.org.